Eric, what's the biggest or craziest or most memorable even prop bet you've ever been involved in? Uh, I think you got the wrong guy. All right, thank you. All right, I'm here with Sean Deeb, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm sure you were, you knew where this was going. You have a prop bet with none other than the famous Bill Perkins. Yeah, I'm trying to get to 17% body fat by the Starter World Series next year. I'm down like 37 pounds already. Haven't found any time to work out because I'm too good at poker. So I've been playing like 15 hours days, bagging, final tables. But uh, I'm going to get in the gym at some point soon. Uh, but as of now, it's just multi-tabling, running around, and doing some crazy stuff. Bill is such a crazy, awesome guy. He's hoping he loses. Um, I think he loves that, you know, I've built up a community real quick between some YouTube videos, Discord, and just Twitter people following along. And, you know, thousands of people are losing weight as well because they don't want to be fatter than me at the poker table. So uh, I'm lowering the bar every week at the World Series. I mean, I really do want to say I think you are a bit of an inspiration to the poker community, kind of to everybody, really. And what you're doing, I think it's incredible, first off. Yeah, it's weird. I've never been like that positivity, you know, guy. I've always been a shit-talking douchebag, whatever. So uh, this is a new era of my uh, you know, public persona, and I'm enjoying it so far. All right, tell us your craziest prop bet story. Well, I actually did one uh, earlier with my table. There's a $300 Gladiator going on, so I offered to buy anybody at the table in, but they have to drink a tall, life-size daiquiri the whole time. You know, the ones that the drunk people are all carrying around. On the strip. Yeah, exactly. But uh, nobody took me up on my offer, which I'm kind of upset about, because it would be funny to see that. First one that comes to mind, maybe just because I'm sitting next to him right now, is a bet I had with Daniel in the PCA in like 2009 or 10 or something. We were drinking in the lobby one night after play ended and he bet me maybe $2,000 I couldn't do 50 push-ups and he didn't know I had like been actually training for the first time in my life um, and I was like oh yeah I can do this easily. Dropped down, did it, collected the 2000 was drunk and filled with pride and confidence. He's like I bet you 2000 more you can't just do it again and immediately lost my 2000 back. It was not one of my proudest moments. <laughs> We've done every type of prop bet from like drinking the winner's urine to breaking up with your long-term girlfriend to shaving an eyebrow. We did a 100K workout prop bet once. I was kind of fat. Running back to the table in this 1K in Florida, I was like smoking and drinking and just, you know, smoking cigars, drinking wine, just like having fun. And I was like out of breath, huffing and puffing when I got back in this uh, like older gentleman. He was like, Chance, you're a little young to be this out of shape, aren't you? And we laughed for a while, and he's like, I got an idea. Let's bet an amount, any any amount you want, between like a dollar and a million, and we'll each pick, a, we'll make a list of ten exercises, um, choose four off each other's list, and we'll compete at all eight in one day. And uh, I decided 100K, and I trained my ass off for, I don't know, five or six months to prepare, and got in the best shape of my life, won like 40K in side bets from other poker players, and uh, he hurt his spine and we were unable to do it and we had an injury clause neither of us wanted to win like that but you know he's a lifelong friend now and one of the best experiences of my life running across stage during a live show swimming in the caesar's fountains basically you name it um, if it gets the blood going we'll put it on the line what's the craziest one that you have lost um, the craziest one I ever lost might have been uh, mechanical bull riding and I had to chug a bottle of hot sauce. I'm here with Leon Sturm who earlier in the week won the 50k high roller and a lot of people are wondering who you are because you're not sort of, uh, we don't know you that well from live events. Can you fill us in a bit? Yeah, sure. Um, Leon from Germany, 22 years old. I've, I've been playing for a couple of years already, some high buy-ins for the Last year, I'd say, even on the live circuit, mostly in Europe, I guess. And I played the 25k in Miami earlier this year. But yeah, I've been around for a couple of years, but mostly online, I guess. This is why you haven't really seen much of me. And uh, you've also just recently had a big win online. That's true, yeah. On GG, I also won the uh, big 10k for 1.5 million, which is quite absurd to win two 1.5 million scores, to have one, two 1.5 million scores in one week, which I guess doesn't really happen to anyone. But I suppose I'm quite fortunate. A lot of people tell me that at least. And I think you've had a good run, but you're also quite good at poker now. Uh, some might say you're the next Fedor. What do you say to that? Yeah, I've heard that phrase a lot as well. Um, Flattered? Which, yeah, yeah, sure. It really flatters me, but 
uh, if also if you compare the live caches, I'm still ages away from that. And not sure if that's where the trend is headed. I think also the games got a lot harder. And Fedor was way better at live poker specifically than I am now, like way better. I'm usually just playing my game and not really focusing on exploits and a lot of the live stuff that you can do that is like a lot of potential up upwards, I think. Hey everybody, it's Liam here from Poker News, and if you see me walking around the tournament, I'm going to be asking you about song lyrics and whether you can complete them or not. So, if you see me walking around, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to start saying lyrics to the song, and then you're going to, you're going to finish them. Okay. All right. My baby don't mess around Because she loves me so, and this I know for sure. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Don't breathe too deep. Don't think all day. Dive into work. Drive the other way. All right, Sergio, I'm going to start a song and then you're going to complete it. All right. Roxanne. Ro no, I don't know. You don't know? Either. Okay. Touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. Sweet Caroline, ba, 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 good times never seem so good. It's going to take a lot to drag me away from you. I'm drawing deader there oh, than I was on Roxanne. All righty. Oh, God. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Took the midnight train going. Bro, this is why I play cards mediocrely. I can't, like, I can't live up to that. Congratulations, Josh. Bracelet number five. It looks like that win really meant a lot. Yeah, I know I'm on the outside looking into the Hall of Fame and I, because I look at the list of people and, and just to think that I'm close and now like with a little more success, I might get thought of. I mean, Brian Rass, Matt Savage, Asai, Schoenberg. Um, I mean, the list just goes on and only one person gets in a year. So this is just another step that will give me a chance to maybe be inducted in the Hall of Fame one. I've spoken to you about this before and how much it means to you. Why does it mean so much to you? Uh, it's just like, you know, forever I was just, uh, poker players were looked at as these like backroom hustlers and and oh you're a poker player you're a bad person you gamble for a living how do you do that but but like this it just i've said it before it just gives it a little validity um and to be to be thought about in you know the names of people that are in would just be insane and looking back at this tournament you came in today as the short stack how did you manage to turn that around coming over here today i was just i had this huge rush of clarity and calmness and I wasn't the least bit stressed out and um, I, I just knew that Limit Hold'em is a game of momentum and a game of rushes and I was like well there's three people left one of us is going gonna go on a rush and it can very easily be me and that's just what happened. And it's worth noting that your very first race that was also in Limit Hold'em believe it or not back in 1999 how has the game changed in the last 20 years? Oh, it's totally different. Like, I mean, the player that I was in 99 would have had literally no idea what to do. But luckily, I have uh, some very talented friends. And I got like a 10-minute crash course from guys that play in Bobby's room, the biggest limits every day. And uh, it, it just gave me a different outlook on what I need to do on the button and what I'm calling with and what I'm three betting with. And uh, it, it, it definitely is 100% the reason why I'm standing here with this in my hand. And finally, a crazy fact, looking back at your Hendo mob, for anyone that doesn't know, that was also your very first brace, that was also your very first live recorded cash. Yeah, it's... I yeah. don't think many people have managed to do that. Yeah, it's... Uh, hopefully it's not a bookend where it ends, so hopefully this isn't my last <laughs> yeah. cash. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Did yeah. you ever think back then that twenty over twenty years later you'd be still here no, winning braces? No, no, no. I never. I I was just a kid in a candy store, just really loving every minute. And just to think that I'm still doing this 25, 24 years later is just a dream come true.
You're a rich girl and you go too far because you know it don't matter anyway. Take it away, Matt. Poop and pee.